So before we get into today's Impact Show, we have something very exciting coming this April. So if you want to have the chance to win this fantastic coaching plan, click the link in the top right corner. So before we start today's video, just want to say a big thank you to David Ledbetter and all the staff here at the David Ledbetter Golf Academy in Champions Gate, Orlando, Florida. Now, Andy, this is obviously the month of practice and changing golf swings, really getting in depth with this. And we want to talk about the slice. The reason we talk about this a lot is because a lot of golfers do have this problem. They do struggle they? with it, yeah, definitely. So, so look, we're going to go through, you know, there's lots of ways you can do this. We're going to go through three of our main ways on how we just control the club face, because I think that's the key. You know, what we know there's a path that can be out to win for the right-handed golfer to the left there. You know, we know that can obviously cause a slice, but it's the club face that we really feel is the main driver of causing that golf ball to slice. The main reason that you swing the club to the left throughout the golf. Exactly. Course. Look, if you can have a good club face at impact, then generally we're going to see a decent sort of swing direction. So again, manage this better. If you can get it slightly closed to the path, then great. You're not really obviously going to slice it yeah. from there. So if we can manage this better, we're going to give you three great drills that's going to really produce a much squarer club face at impact. Yeah, and it's, look, it's worth saying the majority of guys that we coach, you know, we get them to close the face first and then change the path of their swing. Yeah. Okay, so Andy, look, tip number one. Well, let's start, with, let's start with the grip, okay? How we hold the golf club is so key. So look, for somebody who tends to produce this curve to the right pierce who has an open face when they strike the golf ball we have to start with the grip so look you know you need to look at what both hands are doing and if you are somebody who slices the golf ball and has a a weak left hand for instance where you can't really see too many knuckles on there then why not let's just you know go a little stronger we're going to move it around so you can even see three potentially four knuckles now straight away what this will do it will change the relationship of the face down to the ball without you having to worry about the, uh, any swing thoughts. And I think if you yeah. can do things, Pierce, if you can make a change without thinking too much, mm -hmm. just by doing a grip change, it's a massive help. So what you're saying is with the left hand there, it could be a little bit too much round to the left. The left, yeah. So we're going to move it a little bit more round to the right. Again. It doesn't so, matter if it goes past a textbook no. two-knuckle grip. No, okay. so again, from here, look, I can see the logo on my glove there, as opposed to here, I can't see anything. Okay. So, that, you know, experiment with this. Get the left hand over, the right thumb, sorry, the left thumb will be down the right side of the shaft. Now, in terms of the right hand, we see somebody who struggles with a slice, their grip or their right hand can be very much over to the left like so. So we want to get a little bit more underneath. So right hand on the inside of the thigh, a little bit more from underneath here. Again, that will have a massive effect on closing the club face. So I think one thing people do, Pierce, on the golf course, and I've seen this a lot, is they get there and they, they almost try and close the face to start with. Yep. So they'll take their normal grip and they'll shut the face down. But the problem is here, look, I've got a really weak grip now. Yep. So if we can keep the face square but change the grip, it's really going to change what happens down back at the ball. Yeah. And I think look, the, the right hand or the trail hand for us seems to be the one that really causes more problem than the lead hand. But why not experiment with both? So you're going to hit a shot with this yeah, here? I'll, I'll so I'll tell you what, here. I'm going to get you to give me a strong grip, okay. stronger than you're used to, with your normal swing and we're going to see what happens to the ball flies. Okay. So we're we're right assuming it will go to the left. So I'm going to go with a four knuckle grip. Look, left thumb <laughs> is down there. Right hand is a little more under as well. This might go a little low and a it little. Might go left. a little bit off the toe as well. So I'm going to step over here. <laughs> well, you called there it. You go. So low and left. But you know what? If you're a slicer, you'll be over the moon with that. That's gone a long way, but it's gone a little left and not curved to the right. That's exactly what we were looking to achieve. Right. Okay. Tip number two. What we have got, we have got. Um, this is obviously something you can use at the driving range or when you're on, when you're on hard floor or on grass. So I've put both options there for you. So we've got an alignment stick, and we're putting it in a little bit sort of flatter than his spine angle at setup. You'll see that in a moment. The reason being it's going to ha be a checkpoint for his club face. But obviously in grass, you can put the alignment stick in the ground. On a driving range, you may need a basket there to prop it open. So Andy, if you just take your setup, so we can see there now that that, that shaft there, that alignment stick, isn't quite the same angle as your spine. A little bit now, more, yeah. What are we looking to achieve for a square face? Okay, so swing? a square face, let's go for more of matching the, uh, the spine angle here. So as I'm swinging the club back here now, I've got the leading edge to match that. Now, for somebody who slices it, Pierce, it often happens 
early in the backswing where they over rotate the face by the time they're here we can see the club face the leaning edge is nowhere near that so if they can get off to a good start and keep the club face slightly more neutral or face yeah. looking a little bit more down it makes it so much easier and they have to man manipulate the club a lot less on the way down okay so that's the point one we call that the yep. first time the club shaft is parallel to the ground what about the third time the club okay, shaft so is parallel to the ground from here matching it up yeah. continue to the top now on the downswing now really want to get it in as much sit there's a little bit open there so I'm really going to feel as if I can get it matching that alignment stick there again look at the club face now there's no way from there that's going to go to the right if anything that's a little too much yes. but that's great because doing the practice swings compared to the actual swing is a lot different. The good thing is now you can video your golf swing and you can see that if it's in those open positions that Andy was showing, that you can then maybe exaggerate this drill even more. But the way we like to do this is, you know, so if Andy would just take your setup, see if you can just put some uh, flow to this Andy, not hit the shot. So swing back and check and then go back up and check it down there quite quickly. There we go, beautiful. So he's really working hard at those positions. All right, let's see you hit one. Okay, so I'm just gonna again get that first move away, feel of the club rotates a little less. Again, possibly a bit more of a draw than he would normally get. Not quite the hook that he had before. Maybe a little bit more of a draw. Yeah, so again, there's that draw yeah. working from right to left. A little bit higher than the last one, not quite as severe. Mm -hmm. Okay. All right, so there's the, that's the second one. Third one, Andy, what are we looking at now? It's a little bit more of a something that happens after you hit the shot, but sometimes when we work at something that happens after the shot, it actually improves what happens when you're hitting the shot. It does, and look, some of the best drivers in the, in the world, in terms of when they're using their driver, they have a lot of club face rotation mm -hmm. post impact. So, you know, people springs to mind, Tiger Woods, Phil Mickelson, Greg Norman, they have the toe of the club passed over the heel aggressively through the golf yep. ball. Now, for somebody who slices it, we don't see that. We see that the, the club face tends to look down the target yep. line for a little too long. So we have a great drill that we call laser butt. So what we're gonna do is swing back and then swing through. And we're gonna feel obviously some rotation of the, the club through the golf ball, but we're gonna really feel as if we can get the butt of the club to point down to the target when the club is parallel to the ground here. Now for somebody who, who leaves the club open like so, you'll see what happens. Look where the butt of the club points, points more left. So it really will encourage much more of a club face rotation through the golf ball and getting that butt down to there will make a huge difference. So what we work on, you know, past impact mm -hmm. pierce, we always say, change is what you do before impact. Okay, let's see you hit one there. And if we think about Greg Norman when we're talking about driving, you know, he's probably one of the best Pretty good. has been. So I'm, on this one, I'm actually gonna go sort of full out, but I've just got the feeling here, I'm getting that, that laser button rotation through the shot. So you won't actually finish that point, you'll be at I'm that a, point, yes. but you'll go into your normal finish. Definitely. Okay. Again, another draw. Another draw. So again, there are three shots that I wouldn't have hit the fairway with, but I'm exaggerating every motion, and that's what you need to do in order to fix that slice. So thanks for watching, we hope you enjoyed that. If you have any questions at all, comment down below and we'll get back to you soon. Now, if you want to really dial in those drives and hit them even straighter, go and check out the Me and My Golf Weekly. So if you like the look of the trailer there and if you want to hit the golf ball a little straighter, make sure you click the link in the corner and we will see you there.